Today, we're looking at this really nice dash camera for your car, or truck, or SUV. Inside, it has the Sony Starvis 2 chip, meaning that you can capture a lot of nice details while driving in the dark at night, for instance. When you get the box, this is all you would get. You get the rear view camera, the front camera, which is a lot chunkier. This is because it has the Starvis chip I mentioned earlier. Recording 4K is no joke. I would imagine it will get really hot. There must be a big heatsink inside to cool the whole thing off. Mounting plates. Instruction, 5 volt USB power supply that plugs into your cigarette adapter. The tool to help you hide some of these wires. A very long USB-C cable, pretty nice. The other longer cable is for the rear view camera. No memory card is included, that's why I had to buy my own, which is this Samsung 256GB micro SD card. Taking a closer look, you can see how big it is relative to this micro SD card. There are four buttons on the front, and on the left hand side there's a power button right about here. The reason why there's four buttons is because this thing is not a touch screen. And down on the bottom there's a light indicator to let you know if it's recording or not. By default, the whole thing will turn on automatically when it gets power, or you can always power the screen down manually as seen here. Next up, let's set up the uh, date and time. Once you're done with the time, go ahead and click on Next. If you inserted the memory card already, go ahead and click on Next to format it and get it ready. For this 256GB card, it does take a while. After formatting, the light goes to green to let you know that it's being recorded. Now let's go to System Settings, Wi-Fi Hotspot. Let's turn the hotspot on. With the Wi-Fi Hotspot on, now we're going to configure everything using a tablet. I find configuring everything using the app on the tablet is much much easier and changing the settings is much much faster instead of clicking on the buttons on the camera itself. On your phone or tablet, go ahead and download this app, 70 My. If this is your first time using the app, you need to register. You'll want to know your email address, password and everything. So be sure to give it a real email, otherwise you won't get the verification code. Getting the verification took a while. But once you do, go ahead and enter it, and then click on Submit. Let's click on the plus icon to add your camera. But before you click on the plus icon, go ahead and change the Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi of the dash camera. I don't know why it took a while for the Wi-Fi hotspot to show up, but it did take a while. And here we go, you can see the 70 my showing up. Enter in the password that you saw earlier, which is just 1234567 now go ahead and click on plus. The app wants to have Bluetooth, so go ahead and turn on Bluetooth as well, and GPS, just in case you haven't already. Choose dash cam with screen. And now it's going to try to connect to the dash camera. On the dash camera itself, go ahead and press the button to confirm that you're adding the camera. The reason why we're getting this error is because the app wants to try to connect to the internet and register the camera. Of course, that doesn't work because the tablet is now connected to the hotspot of the camera. So go ahead and disconnect it and jump back to your home network with internet. And now it works. The dash camera is now successfully tied to your own account. Now let's jump back to the hotspot of the dash cam. That way you can configure all of the settings as needed. Click on connect to the camera. Allow GPS. And you're in. While the device is connected to the tablet, it will stop doing its thing. Now that we're finally in, go ahead and click on settings. Here are all of the settings that you can play around with that's also available in the dash camera itself. One other thing I really care about is video clip duration. I change it from the default 1 minute to 3 minutes. Otherwise, you'll get a bunch of files. I'm going to disable the 70 mile logo because I want to see the whole video and not some junky logo for advertising 70 mile. In the parking security section, if your camera is hardwired directly to the battery, then you have all of these options for you to play around with. Unfortunately, mine is not, so that's why it's all grayed out. Emergency video is turned on. That way, if it detected collision, then it will automatically save the file. There's no need for you to do anything. I'm going to enable power on and off prompt tone. This way, when a car starts, I know that the dash camera starts as well. 
and vice versa when I turn it off I know that the dash camera itself is off and not recording. Down in record audio I want it to record audio. Speed unit let's change it to miles per hour. And that's basically it with the app. Now let's focus on hardware installation. Here's the mount holder. Behind it is a double sided tape, so go ahead and peel it off and apply it to wherever you want to mount the camera. Getting the camera into position is pretty easy. All you have to do is slide it back into the mounts and then hook up the USB C power supply. We're inside a Hyundai Ionic 5 right now. Once it gets power, it immediately turns on by itself. There is a way to hide all of this hideous power cable by hiding everything inside here, but I find buying that power adapter is not the worth asking price of 35 bucks. So I'm just going to hide it myself all around the car. Let's start. The power cord will go straight up into this crevice. There's plenty of space in there for you to hide the core. All you have to do is just press it in and it will go in. Go to the side. And this one I didn't want to peel anything off, but you can if you want to. And then continue all the way down. Everything is easily pressed in. At the bottom, near the feet rest, under the glove box compartment, there's plenty of space to hide all of the extra wires. And then finally, just go over to the cigarette adapter and plug it in. On the right hand side of the camera, there's also the port for the rear view camera. Installing the rear view camera is extremely tricky. I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to have a link down below for you to see how it's done. Myself, I'm too lazy to do it. And honestly, I think the best way to do it is just buy another cheap camera and plug it into the rear. And now here's some real video footage of the camera driving around town. Here's the day mode. Night mode. Lastly, before we end this video, I should let you know that you should definitely check your micro SD card once in a while, maybe once in a month. If you pop the micro SD card into your computer or laptop, this is all the folders that you would see. Let's click on events. My back camera is not connected, so let's click on the front. These events are when you save the file manually by pressing a button or shock detection. I accidentally set the sensitivity too high, so that's why Every bumps, every potholes, it recorded a file and save it permanently. It does not automatically delete these files at all. So you have to delete these files. Otherwise, your memory card will be filled and it won't be recording anything new. So if you live in a bad neighborhood like myself, with a lot of potholes, don't forget to change the sensitivity down to low. For now, let's delete these files. Control A to select all, hit delete. Yes. Let's go back to the main folder. All the videos that's recorded while you're driving normally is in this normal folder. Let's go to the front folder. In this folder, the older events automatically delete itself. So you don't have to worry about this folder at all. all right, hopefully this video helps you decide on whether to get this camera or not. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel. 
liking this video and thanks for watching.